Okay, we cast all right. Okay. I don't even know how to open this thing. Good day everyone, this is Queenie Gabao and welcome to Lihok Lungtad Lambo Boholano Youth for Sustainable Development. I'm here with Mom Heads Paredes. Hi Mom Head. Hello, Queenie. And we have a very fond history, you know, coming in Mom Heads. So I'll tell you a little bit more about her and she'll talk about what she does and how what she does involves those who are listening. But Mom Heads and I met when I was still in when you were 12. <laughs> when I was in high school, I was 12. <laughs> but if doesn't show, kabalo mo, if makakita mo niya, you wouldn't believe that we met when I was 12. And uh, until now, she's still the powerhouse that I've known her to be. Except I think she's slowed down a little bit. <laughs> uh, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> so, hi, mom heads. Yes, hello, Queenie. It's nice to see you again after I think two years. We've met. Last time in Mosha and yes. then pandemic happened. So wala na kita na kita kita but I'm really happy to see you today. I'm also happy to see you today, Mom. And it felt like a world away when we last saw each other. So, Mom, can you tell us a little bit about about yourself? Like where you grew up and what you what you're passionate about and how you got to do the things that you're doing now. Hmm, so um I'm heads, I'm practically here from the fall so um, I grew up in a small town in Sevilla and I transferred here in Taiwan City when I was seven um, I am a batang uh, mababang paaralan so I graduated in Dampas Elementary School and then studied in Civiscaft and Ooh, taught <laughs> eventually <laughs> um, now by Sue and I'm a researcher by profession and uh, and also a rural um, advocate. So I do um, rural development um, before this crazy pandemic happened. So um, most of my research has involved communities um, and uh, um, agri, focusing on agriculture, uh, fisheries, and the marginalized sector. Um, I did that after I taught for a year in Subiscaf, now by which is so weird, but yeah, that's where we met. And I realized you were when only I was teaching, 22, yeah, I was right? 22, yeah, and then I realized that I still need to learn more. So I, um, I went to Manila, worked in the Development Academy of the Philippines. As a learning manager, we created a program called uh, a master's degree program for masters in um, public management, major in rural development. And then after that, I transferred um, work from full time to project based. So I worked in food and agri culture of the um, of the United Nation, and then I also worked in DAR, and that's where my exposure on sustainable development and. Um, um, practically on sustainable communities right. in rural um, areas. So you really have a heart for community development ever yes. since, Mom, no? When you were a little backtrack lang, you when you were in college, you studied. Um, I um, my undergrad is actually political science, but my professors were all researchers. So when they do research, they'll get us as assistants. So. I was able to expose myself in different rural development projects as well. So that's where UP. the expert, yeah, in, in UP Miagao. And our um, campus, <laughs> it's like promoting Miagao, but our campus <laughs> is actually uh, 42 kilometers away from the city. So I live um, practically in a rural uh, university, yeah, in a rural setting. There's mountains on the side and then Naidagat. So I get to like enjoy both. So I think that inspired me na, you know, this is really the kind of life that I want. Very simple, but um, I get to, um, but also not kind of um, undermining education right, and yes. access to opportunities. So they have both worlds. So, that so this in, was in, Miyagawa is in? Iloilo. Iloilo. Right. 
which is yeah. one of the highly urbanized cities that I also lived in in the past. Yeah, yeah but diba? it's highly urbanized, but it's still very calm and Laid rural, back. suburban. Oh, hindi nila wala na wala, mama. Wala na wala. But yeah, the opportunities are there. There are big universities. There are big companies where you can work. Right. Pero they keep the place. Um, I think yeah, in terms of sustainable province, ah, grabi kita ni ilo murag makaiyun ka nga. They have both worlds. It's mm. amazing. Okay, until now, ma'am, if I remember correctly, ang ang roads they make it a point to have trees. Yeah, the it, in the middle, yes. de ba? Oh. And then the side walks and bicycle oh. lanes. <laughs> and then uh. even if kung ato kasi lang airport. Yes. Ini pa ako ang pa landing kita sa aeroplano makakita para rice fields and surrounds. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's a good model city yeah, for Yeah, it's really for a things, good like. model. And then after that, ma'am, uh, you said that you also you were developing with, uh, uh, you were developing a master's program. Oh yeah. You also took it, right? Yeah. Uh, you were the first. <laughs> Grave, yeah. that's amazing. I took it also. Um, just out of curiosity, you know, um, in the Philippines, I think there's only one university that uh, teaches um, the rural development as a major. Which one is that? Um, Somewhere in the north, I'm not sure if it's Bicol, but somewhere in that area. No? Yes, so there was really um, there was really no focus on rural development, mm -hmm. like inclusive growth in the countryside. So DAR, DA, and DNR wanted to expose the the middle managers na any na classing of field um, to to keep the agriculture and the fishery sector ba afloat, but at the same time ensure that kanang climate change and um, sustainability is still kanang we're about we're accounted oh, for, accounted for okay before mango they can equate kanang push for sustainable development as something uh, you have to keep it nga dili untouched okay um, right. dili nimo pwede ma maximize ang resources but gusto nila na change ng perspective and then we all know that these areas are the marginalized. Mm -hmm. They um, are the poorest, are the farmers and the fishers. So, kung sa oma na to pag alleviate ang ilahang ang um, kinabuhi, but at the same time, dili magbuka ang kinayahan. So, mo na siya ang goal. And then, two years after, no, two years after, um, I got the opportunity to join the program. Well, I just tried because it's exclusive for DAR, DA, DNR, mm. and Land Bank. So At the time, you were working with DAR already? No, I was with... Um, I had a project for microinsurance and their remand. Si, um, sila na ang creator for microinsurance and microfinance. Okay. Um, like card, kasagana ka. So, murabag. Kani siya nga mga microinsurance mo. Kani siya ang kapalo sa mga ambilad vendors, farmers, mga ginagmay nga mga tindera nga na, para makastart sila sa ilang livelihood. But at the same time, they are the ones also who are kanang dili sila secure. Kung masakit sila, dili sila katrabaho, tungod kay magdepende sila sa ilang halin, so wala sila kita, wala sila makaon. So, si card and other um, microinsurance na create sila o mutual benefit associations. Um, Kanisya own sa mga credit, own sa mga nangutang. So, okay. kung masakit ka, na kay um, insured ka, kung ma totally ka ng disabled ka, so sila na mo bayad sa mga utang. So, na certain level of security ni sila ng mga sector. So, moto siya, I was a training head at that time. And then, I just tried nga, ganhan ko mo enroll because it's a very unique course actually. There were four universities teaching it, and then um, UP. And they were the biggest universities yeah, in UP, the country. UP College right? of Social Work mm -hmm. and Community Dev, Ateneo School of Government, um, DAP, and then Xavier University College of Agriculture. And then there were so many kana bang like complaints that it was so hard, <laughs> and um, and you were part of yeah. So I was developing curious, that, yeah. right? So oh. I was curious. Sir, Man sila. It's meant like ako, grabe ako, appreciation. Imagine you get to 
to enroll to four different universities, like major universities in terms of one, uh, development um, work, governance, agriculture, community dev, social work, uh, management, because that is focused on management. So, you know, this is what you know, mga hagbong, ano ba? So, ikaw nga, maybe I should try just to get the info why is it difficult. But of course, I realized when I just really brought <laughs> karma. This is what I because there are different um, so may tawag na cultures. Like if you study in UP, they're very steadfast, they're very stubborn. Kaya bang, oh, hagbong ka, bahala pa kaga, kamang ka, basta gila lang, kabupasar, pasra na, nga na. But Ateneo also has a different culture, Xavier has a different culture, and SIDAP also has one. So, yeah, moto. But what I like about the program is the meeting of the different agencies focusing on rural and rural development. So and it's CIDAR, the first of its kind, yeah, right? Yeah, CDAR, CDA, and CDNR. So, dito, gakasurya-surya sila kay na may mga overlapping sila mga work, na po yung mga kanang conflicting, like, titling. So, overlap sila at the same time. Na po sila yung mga, mga conflict. So, dito, they get to discuss. And then, finally, after that program, um, na institutionalize um, National Convergence Initiative for Sustainable Rural Development. So, karon na nag committee discussing Nga, different various agencies nga tanang involved sa rural development ka converge na sila and they discuss issues nga common to them and okay. common to the sector and it's still until yeah, now yeah. it's active mm. okay that's good mom no coming out of that collaboration yeah yeah so if you were to give us perhaps a definition of what sustainability looks like when the rubber meets the road what does it look like for you um I think I got a, a a very good picture of sustainability and the challenge of not being sustainable. When um, when I did a project in Sikugon Island, that was really for me one of the like life changing projects that I had. Okay, um, when I went there, like you get to travel forty five minutes or an hour by sa isla, and then the isla was kanang murag dito jud na hanok tanang problem ba? They have um, a land issue, mm-hmm. land dispute issue. They have um, a fish uh, fishing issue. So grabi ang um, kwan sa Carles, um, dynamite fishing, okay. and um, poverty issue. Grabi sa dayon ang poverty threshold dito. And then you don't see much kanang. I think they only have one local sari sari store. Really? I think nga ka na medyo na okay. so um and how far away is Sikogon from the Anoma from like mainland? the mainland an hour nga boat ride oh, and that's... ang travel is like twice a day lang so dapat morning ka at to kung ganhan ka mo ni oh so balik ka dapat dayon so dito when i went there for a week sina surprise mo kasi pa there fishing community di ba Pero my god, for a week, kaya ako rin yung gisudan kay Nupos. Like, tanang klase nga lotos sa Nupos. Kasi that, maura ilang makitaan. Maura ilang makatch. Wow, because yeah, ang dynamite fishing, magod kay grabe yung na. nga impact. Okay. Oh, so, naay restoration, murag, naay gip, murag MPA ato nga area, pero ga start pa sila. So, dili ka ayo, maayo pa ang ilahang nga all yield. So, hindi na ko nga, kung, um, wala yung problem siguro sa mainland, no? Kay, kay, syempre, pwede mga kamakatabo. But, um, the earthquake, when, it, when we, uh, during the 2013, di ba, earthquake, um, we also did Bangon, Bangon Bukol. Um, it's a loose movement sa mga taga Manila na nag-send and relief dire. And then, we went to Pangangan. Ang Pangangan galing is na na siya bridge. Where is that? Um, yeah. um, Kalape. Okay. Na na bridge. Na cut ang bridge. So, dili sila kagawas niya. Murag na kota namin ni Father uh, Masula to nga. Masula? Murag uh, sa priest niya. Giyon sa maninyo. So, for a week daw, ipangihaw nila. Tanang baaboy. Para makasurvive sila. Nanang anaw ba. 
So imagine si Pangangan Manggani na naa siya bridge, land bridge. Naglisod manggani sila during the that calamity. Unsa na lang ang um, kanag yung tabukon din yung magdagat niya. As in, ang ang iha nga waves and a regular na travel ha, is, well, I'm I'm very petite. <laughs> Pero double my, double, really? yes. As in, and ang open na siya. And is, kanang Lang regular na diba? pump kanang, boat. Regular uh, pump boat. Yan mo naging, woo, pak, so, so kung mag, so even getting to the mainland yes, is a feat in yes, itself. Yes, yes, so, Iko nga, there should be really plans, like, we are an archipelagic country, so, there should be plans nga, kung manggaling, ma, so na na, mas stranded ang isa ka isla, and we cannot connect to other islands, then we have to be at least sustainable for a month. And, even now, we experience that, diba, with Typhoon Odette, so, na, bagyong hanta, and we don't know where to go, so, grabe ang, ang panic. So, wala tayo sense of security ba? I think sustainability means, for me, it's a sense of that feeling of security and at the same time, sovereignty to food, to, to access to potable and drinking water, to um, power, energy, and, um, and to the basics, nga, to ang need, medicines, Regardless, kung ma kuan ka, ma alienate ka for the rest of the country or even the rest of the province, sa imong own nga community alone, you can still sustain for a month until maabot ang health. Marag ingana ang ako ang concept. It's it's more than security. It's really sovereignty. Marag you can do it on your own. You can sustain on your own. Right. And this is from a community. Yeah, this is from a like community a perspective. Management perspective yes. also, ma'am. So are you are you say, so you're saying, ma'am, na, right now we don't really have measures in place or really equipped currently good on a on a whole as a whole. Yeah. Um let's say community leaders or those who are currently in leadership to have initiatives like these, sustainable initiatives in our community. Is that a not is is there provision right um, now? Should we assess it? Yet? <laughs> <laughs> because that's very evident. <laughs> that's very evident. I mean, I mean, I think that's a reality, di ba? Na, um, when that happened, uh, we really didn't know what to do next. Right. We imagine, saw that first time. Yeah. Imagine the panic started when people cannot contact yes. the neighboring towns mm. for two days. So after that, what happened? So Abinil, and then there are, and also security, also in terms of like, karono information, the truth. Okay, nagpanik ang mga tao because there are posts in Facebook and other social media nga sixty five ang namatay sa ubay. Kaya mga na di ba? So that would really give you a sense of kanang hala. So naon sa namatong ako ng family so panik. And then, ang mga tao, dili, kung, mura bag, wala, kung dili ka, kung, maka, kung maka-feel ka nga, yung mga community, dili ready. Agad itong mga nasa outside, lahi gila gila mo na on. So, I, re- I can really say nga, dili good, wala tayo mo na nga. We don't even have a satellite phone. So, that's one. Um... When Yolanda happened, nama to yung mga satellite phones in Ground Zero area. So, na news dayon nga ingani ang help, ngani ang need. But kita wala. Two days, we don't know what. Unsa magaling na dito sa Bilar, di ba? Kaya dili kaagi. So, yeah, we, and we need that. Um, in fact, na realize na mga kanam bear that this project should also go beyond the um, addressing um, environmental concerns like. Um, sa, the, the single use sachets and um, um, awareness and lifestyle kind of sustainable consumption but it also needs to address um, sustainability as well in times of calamities like it should have a solar panel for charging so that people don't with a pandemic di ba makakita ka just, grabe kayo mga nag charge yes, yes. stations and they forget that you know we can be sick anytime yes. 
So yeah, um, we are not ready, and but we should be because this is going to be our new normal. This is going to be the normal typhoon that we will get to experience in the future because of climate change. So I'm I'm seeing it's so interesting, ma'am, because as I'm listening to you, I'm also hearing an aspect of sustainability in terms of information, yeah. education, communication, yeah. like. We don't consider this yes. one good, yeah, because we are so dependent, right, yeah. on the sources we currently yeah. have. And when we lost it here in Bohol yeah. firsthand, we felt like our hands were cut off, and we were so easy to fall prey to false information yes. or fake news. There you have it, Boholano youth, Mom Heads Paredes and her very comprehensive definition of sustainable development as sovereignty over the basic processes that keep society thriving, especially in the midst of crisis. But wait, there's more. She will be back for our second episode with sustainability in action through a new community initiative she started with her friends. It's the first of its kind in Bohol and it's called Bear Bargains. She'll also share more about how Boholano youth can take part in the movement towards sustainable development. This has been Queenie Gebao. Daghang salamat for tuning in to the pilot episode of Lihok Lungtad Lambo, Boholano Youth for Sustainable Development. If you have sustainability questions and ideas you'd like to share, feel free to drop us a love note at Boholano Youth for sustainability at gmail.com again that's boholana youth and then the number four sustainability at gmail.com till our next episode i'm thinking